Bear Down Bears fans, another edition of the Chicago Bears podcast coming your way another week of where is Justin Fields going to end up and Caleb Williams going to be talk. We're not doing that all week. We'll, we'll, we'll sprinkle it in here and there, but it is going to be the biggest story, so we're going to have to break it down. And why not start off here with Lance Briggs as we've heard some interesting things about the Justin Fields possible trade market here also a week away from free agency what do we want to focus on fixing in free agency ahead of the draft and what are some of the biggest stories in sports right now all that and more on today's episode of chicago bears podcast hit that like button subscribe to the page leave that five star review y'all know what to do lance what's going on man how's uh uh-huh. how's arizona for you right now man like we, we're getting your weather right now it's like 77 degrees out here yeah, I mean, sure, you're, we're we're right there. I mean, it's high seventies, low eighties. You know, it's this is the best some of the best times in uh, Arizona. You know, and it, we have this for the next you know month or two, and then and then comes the the heat. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's definitely Arizona is definitely a different heat. I've been in it a couple of times, and it's one of those where it's like, I'm not, I'm not really. Not really like profusely sweating. Am I dying right now? Is that what's happening right now? <laughs> that's that's kind of every opportunity in Arizona is gone for me. Uh, let's get into the topics, though, Lance. Let's start it off here with the reports out of the weekend. Of course, the combine happening this weekend. Everybody excited for all the players. Everybody excited to finally hear from Caleb Williams and basically hear everything the players said and then go, but what did he really mean? Oh, boy. You know that's how it goes, Doc. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, we the, the 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 outside looking in, man, it's, it create too much. We, we create too much in our heads on on a word or this or that that he said. You know, um, <clears throat> I think the thing that I paid attention to most <clears throat> is excuse me <clears throat> is that <clears throat> when you are a top ten pick, you know you heavily rest your your draft ability on the your your field of play yeah. you know and so we you see these guys that that are like okay I'm not I'm not going to run I'm not going to do this I'm not going to do that you know if you you know why I'm a top 10 pick because you watch me play football and I think that um that really should be the 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 baseline for for all of these players you know it's great to see a guy run a 4 2 1 uh, California kid from um, Fresno, <clears throat> yeah, two hours away from the crib, but, um, but uh, you know, there's there's track runners, you know, that are that are a lot faster than football players on average, but it doesn't make them good football players, you know. So th- you turn that tape on. That's that's what you want to see. You want to see if is his four two one transfer over into football, and it does extremely well. Yeah, I think that was that was inter- that's what was interesting to me about like the combine seeing uh, uh, Xavier Howard run the the four two one or I'm sorry Xavier Worthy uh, run the four two one um, Xavier Howard is that a baseball player I think that's a baseball player don't worry about it uh, <laughs> run the four two one like he was a he's one of the few that I've seen with like that kind of speed that then you turn on the tape and go. Oh, he's also like a really good player and not just a punt returner or a kick. Return. Like, usually that's kind of how it works. I was like, crazy fast. They sent him on go routes the entire game and he returned <coughs> kickoffs. And it's like, no, like this dude's actually a really good wide receiver. Yeah. And seeing that 4 to one is, is kind of crazy to pair with that. Yeah, he, he is. He's got some wiggle to him. Um, he's got some things to him. But the, the only thing that that the other thing that kind of stood out to me, he's got a, he's got a small frame. You yeah. got a small frame, so it's going to be interesting to see, you know, what you know, what he can do, what kind of punishment he can he can withstand or resist or whatever you want to call it, endure. Um, the good thing is, you know, he he played in the SEC or the Big Twelve, but he played a lot of, you know, he played in some a lot of big games and he it's played all mixed up now. games, you know, and so, um, <clears throat> uh, I, you know, I think he's a kid that you can say is battle tested. You know he's battle tested. It, 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 the small frame still at the NFL level. It's it's going to come into play at some point. 
So it, it it scares me so much. Like we got Tyler Scott and I see the 40 time and I see the ability to get off the line. I'm just like, yeah, but you can't run away when you jump in the air to make a catch. And it's just a linebacker lining you up like you can't get away from that. So I'm like, yeah, it, 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 it is one of those things when you see the slider frame, it's like, OK, we're, we're going to see what you're made of really quick at this level. But at a minimum, you know, he can get away from you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there, there's there. When you get to the professional level, too, you know that the technique of those defensive backs are going to be top notch. And yeah. if you look at the the top five or six DBs, they were all four threes. You know, they're all they're right there. So, you know, I mean, it's, you're not running away from anybody. You have a step. You can get a step on somebody, you know, if you get a free release. And not, nobody's going to let you just get a free release. That's the way that this game was. If you were able to get a free release on every every snap, shoot, you know, offenses would be unstoppable. You know, yeah. there's, there's, you know, there's, there's, uh, uh, I almost say there's rules to it, but, but there's, there's techniques and there's fundamentals that, that prevent a lot of that stuff from happening. <clears throat> yeah. We'll, we'll see what, what, uh, where he ends up going. He, he feels like a, uh, I, and I don't know if I've seen him as high on some of the mocks. Maybe he ends up moving up now, but he feels like a Kansas City chief in the making, don't he? Just somebody that's just like Tyreek Hill. Come on now. Come on, come on, young fella. We're going to turn you into greatness out here. <laughs> that would, you know, <clears throat> any receiver <clears throat> that can get on the, the Chiefs roster is in a lucky position. You know, <laughs> <clears throat> you automatically shoot. You, you, you're fresh out of college and you got to get your <laughs> win a doggone ring already, you know? Re- receivers trying to gauge it. They like, I don't want to be too good because, you know, they 32. So, I, but I got I to gotta be, I, I got to be good enough to stay in the first round. I need to check, but I don't want to be that good. I mean, think about back in the day, you get, you, you get drafted to the Patriots, but you play for, let's say, 12 different NFL teams over your six year career or seven year career, you know? And, and, but you get to play with the Pats for one year. Yeah. And that one year, you probably won a Super Bowl, you know? I, and, it's crazy too, because I know a couple of people. Like when I was building up my brand and stuff like that, and they like I reached out to a couple of guys. And was like, I just played the right year with Tom Brady. Yeah, like you would sit there and you'd be like, oh, like oh, you had like you know five year NFL career. What happened? What what went into it? And it's like I played four years with four different teams, and I got one year with Tom Brady. <laughs> it was like I got a buddy. <laughs> I got a buddy uh, from U of A. You know Mike Johnson, and he. He gets drafted to the New York Giants, and in his first year, you know, he starts oh. or in the Super Bowl as a safety for the Giants, you know, which is cool with Antonio Pierce, uh, you know, Mike Strahan, and and on that that squad, and uh, it's just a it's one of those deals, man. Because at, at the time when his 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 rookie year, I think shoot, it might have been my fourth or fifth year in the league, yeah. and. So we've been to the Super Bowl, and now it's like, dang, I don't think we're gonna get back this year. And you did it in your in your rookie year, man. Doggone it! People chase that for all their for their whole life and don't get it. But good. For and it, you. That's it, right. that's crazy. It is crazy to think about that. Like mm-hmm. I think about people that like just showed up on the Warriors run. Like you just got drafted. It's like, what do you need me to do? I need you sit real nicely on the end of that bench. Make sure you smile when the cameras come to you, and uh, don't curse because your mama's watching. Like, right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh well let the one thing that i think is interesting coming out of the combine though and and listen there's gonna be some interesting players that come out of this combine for sure i i, I saw a lot of talent this weekend mm-hmm. but the conversation around the quarterback that we currently have who is a chicago bear and justin fields mm-hmm. going into this was all that you know the bears are trying to move on from justin they're gonna come to the combine and work out a deal and get all this done ryan pole shows up the first day he's like yeah i i, I don't know who told y'all that but uh that's not my plan here I'm, I'm here to evaluate the players that are available and uh we'll see what we end up doing but he did talk about that he wants to do right by justin fields he understands that justin fields is living in a a tough space right now where it's unknown it, it's you know do the Bears want me? Do the Bears not want me? Justin has talked about that on the St. Browns podcast as well. And Diana Rossini uh, uh, came out after the combine and said that she's heard from multiple league sp- sources that she's spoken to that she believes that the Bears are trying to move on from Fields, who are entering the final, who's entering the final year of his rookie contract, and the team has the number one and number nine picks and appear to be focused on using that first pick on Caleb Williams. But the market just doesn't seem to be there. 
So, Lance, I know you're a Fields guy. You want to keep him here. Mm -hmm. But if your plan is to move on from Justin Fields and you start gauging that around the NFL and go, look, uh, we're, we're willing to take it. Who's the highest bidder? And no hands go up. What do you do? Well, the, when you, <clears throat> it's interesting to, it's the, the word play, word play means everything when you want to spin a narrative or you want to spin a story or you want to spin it the way that you want it to be heard. Right. So to really to keep people talking. Um, the, yeah, you know, there's, there's a trade that, that for Justin that says, okay, you give me this, you give me three first rounders over the next three years. Absolutely. Who's not going to do that? There is, right. a, there's a trade out there. So when you say, <clears throat> so when it's like, oh, the bears are, <clears throat> they want to move on from him. It is, this is all a process. It's all a process of doing it the right way. If I were the GM, I would be doing this the same way. Like I'm <clears throat> like, I'm, you know, if I say, listen, I have I have Patrick Mahomes here, you know, and I'm not trading him unless you give me give me some. I want I want I want uh, 15 first rounders for the next 15 years. <laughs> well, <laughs> listen, we got, you guys you might have something there, okay? Lance Lance's getting some Lance getting some under the table picks. You can't even <laughs> you can't even trade that far out. You got to have an agreement in place. <laughs> you got to have a real agreement in place. But you know what I mean? There's there's a there's a way that, like it's. It's not like you're he's, he's, he's untouchable almost. I said, listen, let me. I, I'll give you that. I'll give you that trade. But I want to win at least two more two more Super Bowls, and then we'll make that trade. You know, right. but it's, it's, you know, I don't know. That's not a, that's not a, a a real story. But it's it's just saying that you you have to do your due diligence. You have to you have to search. You have to see if there's something out there that you can walk away from. All right, I got this Bentley right here, and I'm not going to trade it in. You know, unless it's a Rolls Royce. You know, yeah. and so it's uh, um, the, and and if you talk about the market, oh, the market's not there. It's probably because you know someone's not willing to give up that many first round picks or whatever. You know, there's yeah. they're like, I just can't go there. You know that that would destroy our organization. So <clears throat> I, I just I, I think there's there's a right way to do it, and I think that that's what they're doing. And by doing that, it opens the door to all this speculation. Oh man. They really must be on to I hear there's a leak here saying this and that. And then you get uh, Ryan Poles to come up and say, I don't know where you heard that. We're just doing what we're supposed to do. I'm just doing what I'm what I know to do. So. Right. <clears throat> and, and, I, and, I, and I like the, I, I really do. I like his approach. And, I, and to me, um, whatever decision he does make, I know it'll be a thorough one. Oh, yeah. He's a Boston, oh, yeah. that, Boston that, College guy. You know, he's smart. That's that's what I love about it. Yeah, him and Tommy Waddle. Yeah, I mean, listen, there's some of the smartest in the business out here, though. Mm -hmm. um, that that's what I like about it, though, right? Like everybody was expecting, like the draft combine was going to start. Like they were going to have the first guy do like a shuttle. What was it? The the D lineman went first, and Ryan Poles is going to be walking out like, wait a minute, stop the shuttle. We got a trade. Yeah, I mean, like right. Ryan Poles, he talked about he wants to get this done quickly yeah. because he wants Justin Fields to know where he's going, said he could start his offseason preparations, different things like that. But he also is not going to rush this. And I think that that's such a when I heard him say that, right, I was like, I, we might not get this done by the combine. I do believe you're going to if you're going to trade Justin Fields, you're not going to get better compensation than pre free agency. Because there's a couple of quarterbacks coming on the market and Russell Wilson and Kirk Cousins that you have to say are better options for teams than Justin Fields may be right now. Uh, you've also got all of the rookie quarterbacks. Like you're, you're talking about probably six quarterbacks that teams are going to be looking at between the rookies and the free agents that are available. And of course, right, like some of the some of the <coughs> mid tier guys, right? Your Geno Smiths may be available. Guys like that, right. different things like that, where. You say, okay, where do I put Justin in this? Along with the fact that I have to pay him twenty five million in two years, along with the fact that I have to give up draft capital for him, and which one is better? I don't think the Bears see better draft compensation than pre free agency, mm -hmm. and that's why, like, I'm not to say I'm worried, but it's like if you don't get a deal done, but you do evaluate Caleb Williams and go, he's Pat Mahomes. Can you just take the L? Like, are you okay with that? Because right. the one thing, the one thing if I you're view wrong. 
if, if you're wrong, wrong you it's say, if you come in that room and you say, listen, he's Patrick Mahomes and he's not, you should be fired. A hundred percent. No, he he loses his job if you if you and 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 don't let Justin go out there and cook, right? Don't let him go to Atlanta and he's like, come on, dog, y'all gave me up for a fifth, slanging. Yeah, you know I mean, like, sure. but. The one thing that I will say is, right, when is it acceptable to take an L on a deal? I think about how the Niners gave up so much draft capital to go get Trey Lance. And then you find Brock Purdy at the last pick in the draft. But now you're in the Super Bowl with Brock Purdy. Nobody cares about what you gave up for Trey Lance all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. So it's it's like, I guess the, the, the biggest question is, take the player out of it. If you have a plan and the NFL doesn't agree with following your plan, mm -hmm. how do you pivot in this situation where you're coming in with two quarterbacks? I don't think you start the season with both of them. Well, you know what you you definitely know what you have in in one um, the problem with the one that you have. You know, you've had three offensive of coordinators in the three been there. Now you bring in a new quarterback. Um, is he, how will he respond to the coordinator you have? And how many coordinators are you going to go through with you bring in this new court, new, new quarterback? All right. Yeah. You know, like it's what, what are, what are, what exactly are you willing to give to get, you know? And so it's, uh, it's, to me, it's, uh, it's a big, it's a big roll of the dice for, um, for a team that you're saying we need to win this upcoming year. Yep. You know, um, if you know what you have, you know exactly what you need to do in order to uh, um, to build it or to build around it or to make it to get it to where you need it to be. And so if let's say we had if we had Brock Purdy, say if we had Brock Purdy, then, you know, we need to get we need to be elite at damn near every position outside of quarterback. All right. We need we do. We do, yeah. You know, as, you, know I, I, you know, Brock Purdy in, in this Bears offense is, is going to struggle. You know, yeah. a lot of quarterbacks probably going to struggle. You know, especially in this last year's uh, last year's uh, system. Um, so it takes a special kind of guy, but you can put special people around him and make them special. What would, what is your expectation? Let's say the Bears do move on from Justin and they and they go to Caleb Williams route. I've said that. Unfortunately, because of the circumstances that are around him, he has to win right away, more so for the coaches to stay in place than anything. Caleb's going to be here, right? You drafted him first overall, he's going to be here. But what is your expectation of Caleb's first year in the NFL? Does he have to be the generational guy? Or are you giving him the time that we've given Justin Fields <laughs> To, to kind of turn into the player that he is. Well, he's 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 gonna get he's gonna get the time Justin Fields had, no matter what. However, he will not if he doesn't if he doesn't have if he doesn't show up like C.J. Stroud in mm -hmm. year one, um, people are going to question it. You know, like there's a lot of pressure on him to come out and and even though they say okay now we have Caleb Williams so. You know, really, this year is going to be a kind of a push. You know, we can, we can't even though we expected this year supposed to be a, it's supposed to be a playoff uh, uh, season. We got to say, you know, maybe they won't get into the playoffs, so we got to give them a pass for this upcoming year. Um, <clears throat> but if this guy is the guy you say it is, he is. You know, if he's the next Patrick Mahomes or yeah. Stroud, then that's what we need to see. And if not, then. They're going to call, call the, you know, in Chicago, they'll be calling for your head by game four. And and I think that's what's, that's what makes this tough, right? It's not to say that Caleb Williams is not going to get the time. He's here, right? You drafted him number one overall. He's probably going to be here for his full contract just because of the fact that you drafted him number one overall. But Flus does not get that time. And I think that a step back, Unless, right, like barring injury, like barring something insane, right? Well, like we look at the defense and we're like, everyone's hurt. Like there's no way the Bears can go out there and win games mm -hmm. with how bad the defense is beat up. Barring that, I would say that it would be really tough for you to go into next season if you took a step backwards as the head coach of this team. Like I think Flus's job is on the line. I think that this is a hot seat season, no matter what you do with the quarterback position, because yes, you built something at the end of the season, but the reason that you 
had to build something yeah. is because you took a massive step back to start the season to square one. And then maybe you got to three or four, yeah. but we thought you were at two coming into this season. Yeah. 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 Um, and, and, you know, obviously something had to give. So yeah. they had to, they got rid of, um, of Getsy and it's, it's one of those deals. Like even during the season, I'm, it was, uh, it, it was, uh, yes, you know, getting rid of Getsy, you had to, you know, it's, it's that when something had to give, but even during the season, I'm like, look, if what you're trying to achieve is, is get to the playoffs, um, you know, and you're trying to build around this, uh, you know, this kid, you got to win now, you know, there's got to be some sort of continuity, you know, yeah. because you, you, you do set yourself back because you, when you bring in a new guy, which you brought in a new guy the year before and you brought in a new guy the year before, like that's asking a lot of the guy that you want to lead your team. So, yeah. <clears throat> so it's, you know, and I, I understand them. I understand them firing him. I, you know, I don't disagree with it, but I'm trying to put everything in perspective of what are you, what is it they were trying to do? And if we're trying to do this, you know, does moving this piece out get you to, the uh the the get you to first place or second place or into the playoffs it's tough it's a, it's a, it's a tough call yeah <clears throat> nah, hey that's why ryan poles where's the uh where's the big shoes in that building that's why he gets the big office that's why he's got the the orange tie but guess what uh Lance, it's time for the, the road to the draft brought to you by mm. Toyota. Let's go places where we give Lance Briggs that raise, ladies and gentlemen. Gets the nice corner office overlooking the fields. Gets to see everything. Orange tie, blue suit. You look like a blue suit guy. I can see. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. oh. That, 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 <laughs> on, on camera, it just looks like that scene in Total Recall. We're like, yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> ah! <laughs> 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 the light, but uh, <laughs> with you now being on the clock, Lance, with the combine behind us, what questions would you have gone into the combine asking prospects? What would you have been trying to gain information wise from these prospects to figure out how they tick and whether they are perfect for your team? <sighs> um. Yeah, I'd ask them, um, who are your who are your favorite teammates on the team? You know, who uh, if I went to your your school and I went around the locker room and I asked who you were close with, who are those guys? You know, mm -hmm. and um, um, what kind of if I asked those guys what kind of what kind of person you are, what would they say? You know, um, and of course, we're going to talk X's and O's. We'll talk coverages. We'll talk uh, uh, schemes and understanding uh, what your keys and assignments, alignments and uh, keys and execution, all that stuff. We'll talk all that stuff. But beyond that, there's a few things that I would like to know and and, and about you as a person, you know, um, what motivates you. I want to I want to find out what motivates you. I want to find out if if uh, you're a guy that that likes to look sweet. You play linebacker, but you want to look sweet. All right. So, so if you tell me you, you love to look sweet, you play linebacker. I probably don't want it. You know what I mean? I, I need, I need, you know, listen, that, that posi the position is not pretty. You know, what you have to do is not pretty. So if that, what, that's the first thing you tell me is, is I like to look pretty. I'm like, leave that to the DBs, leave that to the DBs and the receivers, man, and, and do the dirty work. So those are some of the things that I want to know about, you know, as a linebacker, you know, and the things that, that fuel you, you know, if you're a guy that says, uh, man, you know, uh, I, man, I, I just I, I love the glitz and glamour. I love, you know, just I want to be I want to be on TV. I want to shine. I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to get the big contract. OK, I get it. I get it. But tell me what kind of competitor you are. You know, I what I want to hear in our conversation is how dead set you are, like how passionate you are about competing, yeah. you know, uh, because more than anything else, like it. it 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 it, does, it bothers me that any any full grown man that 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 says he it's in the in the the field of competition whether it's on the field off the field in the office no matter what uh, would would just sit back and 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 allow someone else to 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 beat you you know to enforce their will upon you 
you know, and then and you lay down or you say, oh, that's OK. You know, it should drive you, it should feel you, it should piss you off and and you should be turning around and say not never again. You won't do that. Yeah. Again. You know, matter of fact, line it, line it up again, you know, and that's the that's the drive that I'm, I'm looking for. I'm looking for that passion. If you have that passion, shoot, you know, we can get you, we'll get you around the ball. <clears throat> I, I think, I think was always like listening to write the press conference and things like that. The one thing that stood out about me, and I don't know if this is going to play out to be true or not, but I always like, whenever I hear the guys that are like, I just want to win. I'm like, but do you want to be the best in win? Or do you just want to win? Because like we said, right, there's rookies that show up on the team and they just, hey, I we, I got a ring, baby. I'm out yeah. here. Like I was, I was on the team. I got stories the rest of my life. Like, do you want to win? Because there's a bunch of guys that I know that just want to win and they'll do whatever it takes to win. And sometimes what it takes is like you get out the way. Yeah. Versus what I loved. And and listen, y'all know I like Justin. I, I want Justin to be here. But what I love that I heard from Caleb Williams, and I do think the whole Michael Jordan, uh, 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 Walter Payton, I love deep dish pizza thing was absolutely a thing just to get Chicago Bears fans worked up. But he said, those names are legendary. And that's what I want to bring. He said he and that to me means, you, you say what? He said he wants to be immortal. Yeah, he wants to be immortal. He can't be immortal. He, hearing that? I'm 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 here for that. Yeah, you know I mean, like immortal means you did something so great that we like. Listen, <laughs> hey, hey, look, Liz, I keep saying this. I'm like, I'm running out of reasons that Michael Jordan's the goat. He just is. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> sitting, yeah. Hey, every time LeBron do something, I'm like, it's pretty good. I was that was 39 years old, forty thousand points. He's. I mean, he's played so long. You know, he's played. He's played so long. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I, I have. I don't have anything bad to say, necessarily bad to say about LeBron. I really don't. I really don't. You know, he's got a, a masterful career, and the things that he's done off the, off the court is incredible. It's really incredible, and his, yeah. his ability to give back and and reach his influence, all that stuff, man. Um, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, he's he's been. <laughs> I think even that though, right? Like twenty one years in the NBA, like that's a talent. Like that, like seeing the players that do and still being able. I said this uh, uh, on Locked on NBA the other day because I was so irritated by the Bulls who had just lost yet again. Um, Sorry. That, Sorry about that. Yeah, it's tough out here. How's the Kings? Kings look good. We're, we're, st- we're straight. We're straight. We were Kings look good. No. We were sitting at six, but I think we've been on a uh, um, um, uh, win streak. So we're yeah. streaking a bit. So we're, we're, we're right where we need to be. Going streaking. Uh, here's, here's what's going. So like LeBron James, 39 years old is scoring more than every single player on the Chicago Bulls. That's pretty good. <laughs> like, he's scoring more than most teams' best scores when you start to go through the list of teams. He's averaging 27 points a game. It's not normal at 39 years old. So I, when a lot of people say, like, he's played so long, that's why he's gotten this, I'm like, but most people can't do that. I watched year 21 of Dirk Nowitzki. It was bad. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's and that, that, that speaks to, you know, um, that speaks to his drive, you know, and, his, yeah. you know, and, and, and his ability. He was, he was picked to be this kid, this, this, this guy right now, when far before he graduated high school, everybody knew, <laughs> everybody knew that LeBron was going to be LeBron. He, he, he was picked to be this type of player. He's being right now. Mm-hmm. At 16. At 16, yeah. yeah. He's, he's 39. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Oh, you know, but we've, all, I, we've all watched him grow. We've all watched him grow up in this country. I, I say all that to say, like, when you hear about, like, those legendary players, when you hear about legendary stat, like, those are the things that I like to hear coming from draft prospects where, yes, everybody wants to win. Nobody wants to lose. Like, that's why you play a sport. You want to win. But what do you want to be as a part of that winning? Do you want to be the reason the team wins or do you want to just be a cog in the machine as the winning happens? Yeah, uh, I, I hear you. Uh, you know, um, and, and, and it, it's all to me, it still comes back to, you know, uh, that what drives you, you know. Mm-hmm. And yes, winning, yes, winning drives. Yeah, winning, winning should drive everybody. But at the same time, like it's it's the work that you put in, like it's the journey. It's the it's it's everything that 
that leads up to having a chance to win? What are you doing to give yourself the best chance to win? You know, and, and uh, are you, how do you lead? You know, are you vocal? Are you a vocal leader? Are you a leader by example? You know, do you understand your role? Because in football, you know, the best teams, they, those, those members understand their roles. Yeah. You know? um, well, I'm, I'm playing next to Erlacher. He's the face of the defense. You know, that's not my role. You know, uh, the, 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 the main vocal leader of our team, you know, Olin Krupps, that's not my role. You know, my role is to go over here, play uh, weak side linebacker and make play after play, you know, <clears throat> and so and, and, and say what needs to be said on on the field, on the sideline, whatever needs to be said needs to be said, you know, but yeah. <clears throat> I understood. I, we all understood our roles. And that's what makes you, I think, uh, um, great. I think that's the thing too, right? You got to have that perfect combination. You got to have that guy that is the vocal leader. You also have to have that guy that is the face of this. I would say Brian was probably the face of your team, mm. uh, uh, not just the defense. And then, you know, you, you also have to have that guy who is just the, Hey, I'm gonna get it done. Yeah. I mean, like, and you have to have that combination of the three because there's not to say that when one lacks, the other can pick up, but like, it's almost like having the the figureheads of the team that everybody else can fall under because those are the three traits that everyone's going to exude. Some guys are going to talk more. Some guys are going to be more, uh, uh, um, you know, try aspire to be mm -hmm. a, a face of the team. Some guys are going to aspire to be, hey, man, I'm just trying to do my job and do it to the best of my ability. And so you need that leader for everybody in the locker room to be able to go to. Yeah. Yeah. My God. Yeah, that's it's uh y'all was something special, man. I'll say that. I I I uh I hope we can get back there. I see a defense right now that looks like it's slowly working back to something special here. And uh I I'll I'll ask you this, Lance, as we keep this day moving along. That was our road to the draft brought to you by Toyota. Toyota, let's go places. Our goal for this, by the way, me and Black and Abdallah worked this out, uh, is uh because Toyota is such a part of this, we want to get a actual truck to just drive up on the stage and deliver the pick. Uh, when the Bears make it or the trade, whatever it is, and then drive off. And then another truck brings the player up that we select and he gets out of the truck. I, just a, just an idea out there to Toyota. Just an idea. And so you want Toyota to do that at Ford Field? That, yes, at the draft. Yes. <laughs> that's going to That's gonna go over real well with Ford. Okay. <laughs> <All right. laughs> you got to force your way in. All right. You got to make a name for yourself. <laughs> Listen, Ford, uh, Ford will probably let um um american <laughs> american built car uh companies in before they're gonna let toyota all right <laughs> chevy, come on in all right chevy dmc come on in come on in guys toyota no 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 you guys are gonna have to wait in the back <laughs> hey hey just hey just like the pick toyota gotta surprise some people out here that's all i'm saying you just gotta you gotta find your way in sometimes you gotta hit the gas all gas no brakes <laughs> all gas no brakes <laughs> 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 Lance, as we keep this thing going, we appreciate you guys for tuning in, showing love. Hit that like button, subscribe to the page, leave a five-star review. Y'all know what to do. We're one week away, a little over a week away from free agency. What position would you be focused on fixing so that you don't have to address it in the draft? Well, Ooh. there's been some interesting things over these last, uh, this last week, you know. Yeah. Um, so when you look at uh, receivers, let's start with receivers. You know, T. Higgins gets franchised, and Mike Evans just recently, just you know, today or yesterday, he signs a deal with the Bucks. You know, those were two wide receivers that you were hoping would Bears would have a shot at. You know, and so with them being gone, you know that that's certainly going to be a probably a focal point on the in the draft. You know, so. With them being gone, you know, there's an opportunity to look at interior, you know, look at yeah. uh, find a find a, a, a center. You know, that's one of that's a glaring need for us on the offensive side. You know, finding a center who's available, you know, probably not going to leave uh, uh, Kansas City, but Chris Jones, you know, and that at the three. I mean, you're not going to find anybody better, you know, than yeah. him, you know, and, and try to make a run at him. So it, there's there's some things there. Um, you know, try to bolster your uh, your interior lines. Maybe there's a defensive end out there that that can uh, offset our our draft. But the thing about the draft is, uh, 
Um, and, and shoot, who, who knows? Maybe the trade does come in for Justin and then we get all these other different picks or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but, but, um, it's hard to, it's hard. It's difficult to, to predict the draft until you've seen what happens in free agency. Would you rather attack best player available in free agency or need? Because I think when I look at need, right, like you said, the center position is the biggest need. Um, and maybe you can attack that through the draft. There's some really good rookies uh, um, that are coming out this year. But do you want to do rookie quarterback, rookie center, if that's the route that you do end up going? But Brian Burns available. Seems like he's going to test free agency. A very interesting name. Somebody that Ryan Poles wanted in the trade instead of DJ Moore at first. And they were like, nope, we're extending Brian Burns. We're signing him. You can't have Brian Burns. He's going to be a Panther for life. Mm -hmm. A year later, I don't think Brian Burns is going to be a Panther for life, Lance. That's right. That's right. This is is your turn, man. This is NFL. You know what that stands for? Not for long. Not for long. (laughs) Do you go best player available where you've got some really good edges coming out? Yes, they're going to cost you. Yes, you're going to have probably 50 or so million dollars locked up into your defensive line, but that's where dogs are at. That's how you create turnovers, create pressures, things like that. Or do you kind of just look at your biggest needs where center right now is one of your biggest needs? Maybe signing Calvin Ridley as a uh, as a second and or third wide receiver, depending on what you address in the draft. Um, yeah, I mean, like signing veteran, uh, signing a replacement for Bojack, Eddie Jackson, who end up getting out of there, right? W- where would you kind of try to allocate your money most? Well, number one, you got to take care of Jalen. Hundred percent. Number one, I, I'm assuming that's done, but yes, <laughs> Jalen. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, this you got to look at what the what's in that what's in the market right now for who are the top safeties? You know, um, who are the top safeties and and. Uh, you count all the positions that you are in need. All right, we have, you know, four or five positions that are in need right now. So which ones can we plug right now? Which ones can we can we plug in right now to help build this team? If we can get two out of the the, the five players positions of need through through free agency, then that leaves us with three three player positions of need going into the draft. Or we get three that leaves us with uh, more more versatility in the draft, you know, because, you know, who knows what's going to happen? Who knows we're going to take the first pick? Who knows we're going to trade back? But if we get three positions of need uh, addressed in the draft, then, you know, if we trade back, we really can go for, we can start going for uh, 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 best available players, you know. So there's there's a lot of scenarios there's a lot of scenarios, a lot of things you can do, but you have to you have to know what your positions of need are first, and how can we address them? How can we fill those needs? Can we fill more of them through the free agency, um, and and be happy with it, or can we get one or two pieces and say, okay, we can address the rest because um, we have this young football team. We have one of the younger football teams in the league, and we can we can have young talent, build it, and build a core, keep our core, and plug in and plug plug and play. With the other. Where are you least comfortable going with a rookie player at, right? We still got some holes on this team, but there's some really interesting names in the draft, like we've said a couple times there. Where are you least comfortable going with, okay, I need this guy to be good. I need this guy to show out day one. Oof. I don't want to go rookie there. Center and uh, 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 O-line. Hmm. Uh, and I, I, I say this because I've played with so many first-round uh, offensive linemen that we had over the years, and and it, you know, it didn't, it didn't pan out the way we wanted it to. Yeah. So, you know, then when you, when you look at guys and you say, Hey man, this, this is a, he's a top 10 pick, you know, and a lot of those years we were outside of the top 10, you know, we were, we were, you know, playoff team or playoff caliber right there. So we were outside the top 10, a lot of those years. Um, but if you get a top 10 pick, you know, that's, that's one of those where you're like, okay, you can't miss with these guys and, you know, through the whole through the season, you know, me and Alex really went back and forth on on the top two tackles in the game. You are or in right. college, you know, um, uh, uh, Fashionu and and Joe Alt. All of Fashionu and Joe Alt, yeah. Guys are 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 can't miss guys. You know, right. and, and so when you when you have that when you have guys with that kind of type of potential, you know, you 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 pounce, you take it. <clears throat> 
Yeah, it's. It, I mean, listen, and, and you had that last year with with Darno Wright, and it's worked out great for the Chicago Bears. Um, hopefully, the I don't know. Did did he end up needing anything more on that shoulder? I think it, they just kind of let it heal up pretty much. Like I don't think he needed any extended time got, uh, surgery or anything. So he's got all, a whole off season. He's yeah. shoulders good. I'm sure, he's been rehabbing and yeah. and working the shoulder, the strength. He's 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 gonna be fine. Yeah, he's he's a and he's an absolute monster. I'm telling you, dog. Like when we had that, I would almost say right. Like, and it, I know you, they're not gonna do it because you paid Nate Davis. Because Nate Davis is making ten million dollars a year, he's gonna be out there playing football. Yep. But man, when he was out and you had that combination of Tevin and Darnell Wright on the right side of that line, oh my God, they were killing people Tell on you. running the football. I'm telling you, come on. Like I would almost say, and this is this is a tough. But like I would almost say, I would love to see the Bears look at something as far as left guard and left tackle, uh, or maybe try and find a guard in free agency that allows you to play Tevin over there. But I know, right? Like Nate Davis is making that much money; he's gonna get on the field. <laughs> Somebody's getting fired if you're not putting him on correct, the field. <laughs> correct, correct, correct. So, you paid money for him. You got to You, you got to get that. You got to get that out of him. Yeah, yeah, it's it's uh hopefully we see more of a, a, a better season next year. And he was dealing with a lot this year. So I've I've told many people it's like when when you deal with what he dealt with this year, I'm willing to let the human element of the game uh, or the human element come into a game that a lot of time is just numbers and X's and O's. It's like mm-hmm. all right, he 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 had something immense going on on his mind and then came yeah. back and got injured. Like let, lot- let's see what this year plays out to be. There's a lot of distractions for this on this this Bears uh, roster in 2023, man. You know, from from day one, and that there was stuff that pot was stirring before it ever hit. We ever found out about it. That pot was already stirring. So, you know, there was a lot going on, and and when you have that many distractions, it's tough to be consistent on the football field. It's so funny, like, when you think about, like, to me, right, I don't know if you felt this way, but, like, the first four weeks of the season, five weeks-ish, right? The first five weeks, I'd say, of the season felt like they took forever because it felt like another story was coming out every day on why something was wrong in Chicago. It was just like, and then people were just making stuff up, too. It was like, Peanut Tillman rappelled down the back wall and kicked in the window yeah. of Kevin Warren's office. Right. And he told them that Alan Williams was going to have to be fired. And Kevin Warren cried. And Matt Eberflus tore sackcloth and poured ashes on his head. It was like, what are, y'all, what are y'all getting some of this stuff, dog? Oh, that's funny. That's funny. Yeah, you got – and then – so you're just you're spinning that story, then you're spinning the Mel Tucker story. You're going back and forth. They're like, "What's going on in the league?" <laughs> it, it's, there's a lot. It was a uh, it was a wild time out there. Let's say, uh, and then after that, it was just like, "Wait, all we got to worry about is football." Like now we're just worried about this is this is actually fun. Like this is this is more entertaining. Yeah. Um, that's, uh, I, I got a couple of uh, non-Bears related questions for you. you want to start it off here because I saw this on Twitter this morning. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Hit that like button. Subscribe to the page. Leave a five-star review. Y'all know to do all that good stuff. Um, Dak Prescott sporting a new look out here, Lance, and I wanted to gauge your thoughts on it uh, because to me, I'm getting a... Uh, have you ever seen Aqua Teen Hunger Force back in the day? Aqua Teen? It, probably not. It's it's an adult swim show. It it <laughs> It was a very dumb show. And explaining it to somebody who hasn't seen it now feels odd because it was about like a milkshake, a, a French fry, and a meatball. Uh, <laughs> oh Lord, I want to see this. I want to see this new look. What's the, what's the new look? Sport. I'm- here's uh, here's what Dak Prescott sporting here, and I would say hey, this is the Frylock. Hey. I would say this is the Frylock from. Let me see if I could get a picture of Frylock here on here. Like oh. this is. That's it. You rocking with this look, Lance? Are you rocking? I like, I like that right there. Nice, good, and clean, clean look right there. Good edges right there. Good edges. <laughs> good edges, good Lance. Edges. It's gonna grow in. It's gonna grow in perfect. It's gonna grow in real clean right there. I, I see. Now this is this is the show uh, in question here, and, and see, this is all I see. Like this is this is uh-huh. just the just the same. Same mustache, same beard for those Aqua Teen Hunger Force fans out there. I know what I'm talking about. But this this, this is screams uh, um, Mayweather, the back end Mayweather. You know what I mean? When he started rocking the goatee, 
that right there. Yeah, this means it's 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 a sign of of maturity right there. See, is that see, I feel like he's like half and half on that. I can see a little Mayweather, but also heavy Manny Pacquiao most of his career, right? Like I see both there. Like this is like the Pacquiao Mayweather fight coming together mm. on Dak Prescott's fake. Mm. Mm. That's, mm -mm. that's yeah. crazy. Oh, uh, that was oh. crazy. Woo. That was crazy. All yeah. right, let's move on, Lance. Uh, you uh, out of bounds right there with that one. Man. Hey, that was wild. Uh, uh, let's go over to... <laughs> uh, I apologize to uh, to ESPN and my colleagues. The thoughts of Pat the Designer are his thoughts and his... <laughs> mm. Uh, mm. Have spilled I got to ask you about what, to me, has become probably the biggest story, definitely in, in women's sports right now, but possibly in college basketball right now, and that is one Caitlin Clark. Yeah. Um, what she has done at the college level in her final season, and she she did say that she is going to be going uh, to the WNBA next season, did declare for the draft. Is Caitlin Clark the biggest story in sports right now? Like, is she the biggest draw, I should say, in sports right now? We saw Travis Scott pull up to Indiana. Yeah. I don't even think Travis Scott does concerts in Indiana. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Pulled up to Indiana to see Caitlin Clark break the, uh, the, the NCAA scoring record yeah. that was previously held by, uh, get a load of this, Pistol Pete Maravich. Pistol Pete. Hey, uh, yeah, it, it'd be it'd be tough to find a bigger draw than her right now. You know, um, you're that's you know, we're talking Taylor Swift level, you know, and she you know, you, you can you can say that that she's a sports draw because the amount of money that, that the Chiefs were able to to to, to generate because of, of the Swifties. So, you know, but yeah. but uh, but she's not really she's not a true sports celebrity you know she's a celebrity right. music celebrity so yeah no like caitlin has got to be the biggest draw you know it's, it's it's one of those deals too man it's like you haven't you've never seen anyone like you never seen a, a, a shooter in 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 co women's college basketball like her no so, uh, she's gonna be interesting too about how this transitions to the wnba yeah you know it's gonna be i'm sure there's gonna be a, a curve there but you know what does that do to as far as driving the market? I that's the that's my biggest question, right? Does this draw continue to the WNBA? Because to me, I'm somebody that I, I genuinely enjoy WNBA basketball. I can't wait to see what Coach Spoon is gonna do with the sky this year. Um, I, I have a lot of questions on a lot of the roster moves that we've made. Um Kalea Copper, come on, guys. Mm -hmm. Like we couldn't keep all right, whatever. But um I would like to do I'd like them to move the rim down. You would like them to do what? Remove the rim down? Rim down. I would like them to move the rim down. Women, really? Why? And play with a women. Why do women play with a smaller basketball? Smaller hands, I would assume. D different, different frame build, things like that. Okay, so if you yeah. right, so then you know why I want them to move the rim down. I just I I like. Do we? I don't know. Like women's sports to me, not to say I don't understand your point on it, but like. I don't think I go to the WNBA looking for like dunks and stuff like that. Like, I think that's what people think. That's why people look at the NBA and they're like, this is why the NBA is amazing. Like to me, the NBA is amazing because like I can see somebody get mixed up any play, right? Like the, the handles, the, the fundamentals. When I see those things in basketball, the things that people scream about, like, this is what the NBA was back when I was a child. Like that's what the WNBA is starting to do. The one thing that you don't get in the WNBA is the dunk contest. The dunks, yes. You get the three-point contest. You get all the other yeah. contests you can have. You just don't have the dunk contest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the rim is at the men's height. When men play with the men's ball. Women play with right. the women's ball. You know, I just, you know, it, it, it certainly would bring more excitement to the game. And, it, and I think right now you have a, you, you're getting more excitement in the WNBA than you ever had before. Yeah. I think, uh, um, you know, a lot of the, well, I'm, a lot of the NBA players have a lot to do with that, but I think Kobe was one of the spearhead spearhead. Oh yeah, you no, know, he was spearheading that thing, you know, and and that was uh, that's awesome, you know. But I I do just I just think that it, it would make the game a little more exciting. I mean, it, I, that's why I think though that like 
seeing the shooting that we're starting to see come to the WNBA, like I think that will be the excitement that maybe dunking would bring. Because now it's like, before it was literally fundamentals, but it's a lot at the rim. We're getting downhill, stuff like that. And that's when you want to see the dunking. Now that you're seeing the game expand itself out, right? Like seeing somebody with Caitlin Clark range or a Sabrina Inescu, how she competed in a three-point contest this year. Like, I think that that, like, I think that's its own level of excitement. I think that the dunks and stuff that we see in the NBA, like those are exciting. I, I'm not going to say that it's not. The dunk contest is, I mean, it's, it's jumped the shark at this point. Like, I, that's not even exciting anymore to me. Like, <laughs> Jalen Brown dunked left-handed with a Michael Jackson glove on. That's, that's probably one of the lamest things I've seen. And then did the D Brown wrong? Like did he did a he did a flex at the end? Like I don't know if I want that, but yeah. But you know the 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 Aaron Gordon Zach Levine contest. It's the greatest one ever. Come on, right? It's the greatest you one know, ever. And that will happen again. It'll happen again. You're gonna have your down years, but you're gonna get that those ones again. You'll get that that competition again. And that was it's, entertaining. It, that's, it's the greatest one ever. Like, it shouldn't have ended. Like, it, they should right. still be dunking right now because nobody was si – nobody lost it. Like, that. Right. Like Aaron Gordon lost, but to me, nobody lost it. Like, I don't know, man. Like, that was – that was – that was crazy. Right. That, that, he sat down in the air. I'm still Woo! trying to figure that one out. <laughs> Humans are we're, – we're creative, and they will get to you to be creative, and you got guys that can jump that high. They're going to do something special out there. But see, I think that's why I'm saying, like, I think every league has to have its own excitement. Like, I think for the women's, the three point contest, the, instead of a like a dunk contest, like you got to have like a, a the long range contest, the right, because you're getting some women out here that are pulling from like, like Kayla's pulling from the logo. She ridiculous. Like, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> yeah, right. I, 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 I get what you're saying. But, you know, the the one the, the problem for the WNBA, you have to draw you have to draw male fans. Yes, you do. Because the the female fans don't they don't follow they don't follow WNBA like that, you know. Yeah. The female fans follow the NBA because of the male fans, you know, and 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 uh, the NFL is driven by male fans that that, yeah. that are followed by the female fans because a lot of yeah, people yeah. didn't they were like, "Oh, you guys like this stupid game, you guys just bumping heads and, you know, tackle each other." You know, but they, we love that stuff so much that, that it, we really made a move toward you know, make shit, making sure that that women are involved in, the, in all of these sports, but the 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 draw or one of the missing parts of WNBA is having to get more. Uh, you have to get more of the male guys to go. You, yeah, because because you have it's just like uh, when you're growing up. You know, you have you have the 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 prissy daughter and you have the tomboy. Yeah, you know what I mean. And the problem when they get older, you know, the prissy the prissy girl. Is not that interested in 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 sports like that and women's sports, right? Yeah, and and I think I think it's it's funny too because like when you see like a lot of the overseas uh, um, like women's sports and stuff like that, like it's is you're not wrong. It's very heavily male interested sports. Like <laughs> when you see women's basketball overseas, the men are there. When you see uh, uh, um. Women's rugby overseas. I'm trying to get into rugby, dog. I'm really, I'm really liking what I'm seeing from rugby. I might be, might have to figure out how to start watching this. But like, when you see women's rugby overseas, like you pan to the stands, it's a bunch of men in the stands. So you do have to figure out what is going to be the draw for men in bas in in the WNBA, and it can't just be right here. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. When you see somebody doing it, when you see a girl doing that disrespectful. Uh, Shaq dunk, yeah. Boom! Everybody's gonna go crazy. What did you see that? Oh my god! See, I almost say, I almost say that energy that Kalea Copper brought when you you did the uh, when they were in the WNBA finals, where a girl tried to rip the ball from her and Kalea gets in her face. They do the double tech, but like, let that energy come out. Like, you, you're right. As as men, like, we need some animosity. We need some aggressiveness. We need some like and back and forth. So like, dunk is you, so important, Pat. I, see, I don't know if you need the dunk, but I almost say you gotta let it. You gotta let them play like it's '90s, early 2000s ball. You can't call it like the NBA call it. You can't sit there and be ticky tack foul, ticky tack foul. T no, you gotta let some contact happen. I mean, you gotta let them. I mean, if you, like if I was like to me, you know, U.S. women's soccer team is more exciting than watching the men's. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And 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 to me, they win. Women's, I just think they they play a tougher. 
tougher uh, uh, they, they have a tougher way of playing the game. Yeah. No, they don't. You know, they're not grown women that are just falling on fake hits and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, but 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 you know, that's that's one product that's on on the, on the field that I I pay more attention to the women's than I do the men's. Yeah. No, I I hear you, man. Like it it is. It, it's one of those things where the WNBA's, and that's why I've I've talked about the draw with Caitlin Clark. Like I think the biggest thing that the WNBA needs is what Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese bring, which is a call it what you want for lack of a better word. It's an animosity that built up in college. It may be, I don't know if it's going to be at the heights of bird magic, but we know that they, they end up being cool, but like Mm. there was a lot of tension on like, who's the best. I'm going to beat you. You're going to beat me. I'm going to win range. You're going to win. Like I have to be better than you. Like magic is talked about. Like my focus was not beating the Celtics. My focus was beating Larry. Like I had to beat Larry, no matter what. I had to be better than Larry. Like I think now you're getting that level of right. Angel Reese took the uh, uh, the college championship away from from Kay- the national championship. I should say from Caitlin Clark and and wins that and does the ring in her face and all that. Everybody loses their minds, but nobody had a problem when everybody else did it. It's fine. It is what it is. We know how that goes. Uh, but um, you know, does that carry over? into the WNBA. Like there needs to be a rivalry that, that men care about. There just does. It's true. It, it's, uh, it's, it's a fact. It's, that's like, we're saying the same thing. Yeah. We're saying the yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing, but you're right. Oh. There has to be a draw that the men have, that the men are, are, are really drawn to or attracted to. And right now they have that. You know? Yeah. Well, let's, let's hope it carries over. I love WNBA basketball. I can't wait for this season. I I'm nervous about my sky. I'm I'm very nervous, especially seeing that like the aces are just still like ridiculous, and They're, seeing that Liberty are just still ridiculous. Like I mean, I'm dude, just like listen, this women's March Madness this year, dog, it's gonna be nuts, dog, right? Dog. Hey, because here's the thing, uh, uh um, uh, what's the young lady's name? Uh, Juju Watkins, yeah, Juju Watkins. Oh my God, that that's the energy I need on oh. on the sky. That's the that's the dog I need on the sky right there. Cause she coming through. She like, let me hit you with this nice spin move, lay with the bump, and I'm gonna look you in your eye as it goes in. Like I need that. I need that energy. I need that time. Um, I'm I'm excited for the future of of women's sports, uh, women's basketball in in uh, America, and I think we're about to see a jump because we're seeing things that we've never seen at this sports level before, mm-hmm. and there's no doubt about that. Like. We've never seen a woman shoot how Caitlin can shoot. Correct. And when she comes over to the WNBA, I know, um, who was it? It wasn't Cheryl Miller. Who just was talking about her and said it's not going to translate right away. Um, I can't think of of who it was, but. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I saw it. I saw, I think she was on uh, on Pivot or one of them. A curve, you know, there's going to be a curve. Yeah. You know, and, and, and it, it is. It's still going college to the pros, no matter what. Right, but if you can shoot from the paint, I don't know <laughs> from the bench. Up that, I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm not a basketball guy, but I've never seen coaches teach how to stop from the paint. You know, what I mean, like, hey, full court press all game long, full court press. That's what it is. Full court That's press. what it is. Now, now, backdoor passes open yep. all day, all yep. day. Girl. Hey, man, we appreciate y'all for tuning in and rocking with us for another episode of the Chicago Bears podcast. This turned into like an Iowa Hawkeyes podcast randomly at the end there. So like to enjoy that as well. If you're an Iowa fan, uh, hit that like button, subscribe to the page, leave that five star view. Y'all know what to do for Lance Briggs. I'm Pat, the designer. We'll be here covering what the Bears are going to do all week long. Y'all stay safe out there, Chicago. Bear Don. Peace. Peace.